Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I bring you a wireless access point uh, from uh, TP-Link. The AC1200 wireless access point, dual band gigabit uh, port. Uh, as you can see here in the box, the, the two bands uh, with the, um, the bandwidths, the, all the bandwidths all together. Uh, they do a maximum of theor theoretically 1200. Um, it has an option for uh, PoE. I don't know if it actually brings the power over Ethernet uh, inside the case. Uh, greater coverage because it's four antennas. Captive portal for marketing, uh, for marketing. For you guys who don't know what a captive portal is, is once you um, connect to to the network where this one is, this access point is connected. It has a built-in configuration that goes to a splash page, a web page, for example, for you to do some publicity or just to force a login in some sort of um, uh, authentication server or something like that. So it will redirect your connection to a web page where you can actually you could see some publicity or actually do uh, other authentication other than the the normal encrypt, uh, encrypted connection, wireless encrypted connection. So this is the case, three years warranty. It says here in the box, ideal for small business. Here on the back, we have some explanation about the modes. We have access point mode, it's the default mode. So you just connect um, an ethernet cable to the, to the access point and you just connect and you share the network range extender that that's like a repeater uh, client mode which this can be used as a, as you have on your computer like a usb stick to connect to a network this can act as a client and multi ssid in this case the multi ssid is an option um, for example if uh, in an office you have um, for example a network uh, a work uh, network a corporate uh, network then you have a um, uh, bring your own device network like uh, clients uh, for a network wireless network for your clients you can set different ssids ssids are wireless networks um, using uh, vlans of course you're going to need a switch with um, with uh, vlans uh, vlan capable and you set uh, for example vlan 1 will be my office vlan 2 will be the internet for my clients and vlan 3 would be I don't know, a, man, a management um, network, for example. This is the explanation of the power over Ethernet. Power over Ethernet is uh, instead, instead of having the power cable connected directly to the device, I'm gonna show you here on the, instead of having the power connected, you connect the power to the Ethernet and the Ethernet brings uh, data and the power. So there's only one cable coming to the, um, to the device. It's usually useful when you don't have um, a socket where you are um, thinking in implementing this. For example, in a ceiling, usually you do not have a, um, a socket there, so you just use the power over Ethernet. You just have to pass uh, an Ethernet cable. So let's open it up, see what's inside, and uh, see what other features we can figure it out. See if I can find some interesting things inside. I wonder if it brings power over Ethernet. I think it should bring the, the power over Ethernet. I should open it the other the other way. And open this side. It's easy for me. Cardboard. Okay. Oh, yes, it is. Here we have power over Ethernet. Okay, quick installation guide. This is the model TLWA1201. Quick installation, quick installation guide. It's just explanation, explaining all the things they have to include in the devices. Ethernet cable, put this one aside. Let's put Ethernet power 
Let's check everything here and get rid of this. Okay. We have a 12 volts, 1.5 amps uh, power supply. And uh, we have the power over ethernet. So uh, your network goes into LAN. There's a LAN here. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a LAN here and there's a PoE, power over ethernet. The PoE is the one that goes from here to the device. And we have the device itself. The antennas, they're not detachable. You cannot remove these antennas um, to replace with other ones. So you cannot uh, remove them uh, in theory. If you see my other videos, you can see that uh, you uh, probably void the warranty, but it's technically, technically it's possible to change the antennas. So we have the, um, the device, there's the uh, default passwords here at the bottom, the wireless password, the SSID. It comes with a power button, a uh, socket for the power supply, WPS. I recommend you disabling WPS. There's a, I don't know if this in these versions it's still uh, vulnerable, but there's a there was a vulnerability in WPS. Um, you could crack the WPS pin and get into the the network. Disable WPS if you can. Ethernet only one port. This is not a router. This is an access point. So we, what we'll do we'll only have one Ethernet. Once again, power over Ethernet. I'm just gonna remove this out of here. I will get into the configuration in a few moments. So this would go PoE and this would go here. So imagine you have only this cable going to the device and on the other side you will have your power supply and your local network. So you could have the socket you could have the socket anywhere as long as you have enough cable to reach and you can put this in a ceiling, in a wall, whatever you want to put it. So I'm going to turn it on and uh, in a few moments we're going to check the, um, the configuration and uh, the menus see see what's inside. Okay guys, I am currently connected to the access point, TP-Link, the SSID is TP-Link uh 1910 and the default ip address of the tp link is 192.168.0.254 this is the default um ip address the device is not connected to my network i just turn it on and wirelessly i've connected to the to the access point first thing it asks you to create a password I'm going to give a password. Let's get started. Not now. And here we have a quick setup. You want you wanted to use as an access point, as a range extender, as a client or a multi SSID depending on on your needs. You just have to choose. I'm going to just put a normal access point. This is the name this is actually the default password, doesn't matter. We have to change this. Um, LAN, obtain an IP automatically, use the following. I'm, I'm just, just going to leave this um, this way, so I'm not going to use uh, DHCP from other network, just going to use its own. And summary, very easy, save. And uh, it's going to be saving. Oh, it's quite slow saving. I'll speed up the video for you. Okay, and we're back. Okay, nice. Now we have settings. You can set your wireless channels on 2.4. I'm going to put this a bit bigger. Yeah, so you can see better. 2.4, 5 gigahertz, gigahertz, wired clients, wireless clients, your internet router, 
and your internet. I'm not connected to the internet right now. So let's check network. Static IP, DHCP. It's probably it's in auto. Hmm, that's nice. If it doesn't find one, it will probably uh, leave it on. That's that's an interesting feature. Uh, wireless. Let's see the wireless settings. What goodies do we have here? Uh, security, WPA, pre-shared key, WPA2 pre-shared pre key, the KIP, ES, the mix mode, bandwidth, channels, 13, That's that depends on the regulatory domain, sharing network, yeah, 2.4. 5 gigahertz 2.4. What is sharing network? Oh, QR code to connect. That's nice. Portal. I'm not going to enable portal right now. I'll be right back. WPS. Pin code. No, definitely not. Advanced. Oh, I just actually disabled the WPS. I'm not going to save yet. It takes a while to save. Mac filtering, wireless advanced. Beacon, RTS, the team, group interval, wireless multimedia, short GI, API isolation for the 5 gigahertz. Very, very basic information. This is actually a throughput monitor, the graphics. It will build up a graphic according to the bandwidth you're using. System tools. Whoa, there's a lot of system tools. Time settings, NTPs and things like that. Yeah, you can set this. LED control. You can disable LEDs. Okay, before any night mode, make sure the setup is correct. Nightly mode. I wonder what this is. We'll probably disable the LEDs. SNMP, ping watchdog, uh, the ping watchdog is in case um, the access point doesn't reach a certain uh, IP address, it will automatically reboot. Fail count reboot three times, yeah. If I do enable, it will try to ping this address. Every, um, every 300 seconds it will it will ping. If it doesn't reach uh, reach this IP address after three attempts, it will do a reboot. This is a way of making sure that the device is not locked and it needs a reboot. Firmware, up, firmware upgrade, backup and restore, backup configuration, restore configuration, uh, factory defaults is like a reset. Schedule reboot. Okay, you can schedule a reboot uh, every day or every night. Administration, that's passwords. And uh, diagnostics, ping and trace route. System log. And we have the logs here. And uh, that's about it. Very simple. Let's go back to the portal. Where is it? Here. Let's enable portal. Authentication. <clears throat> Simple password. Mm, okay, always on. You can do a redirect. Okay, if you have um, a web server on the uh, on the your wireless network, you can r redirect, and you can enable this on either two point four or on the five gigahertz uh, SSIDs. So what we'll do when you connect to this. I can leave this uh, no authentication so you just uh, log in and it will redirect to one of these pages that you have here or you can just edit a login yeah the login page would look something like this for example an hotel welcome to our hotel blah 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 you can put a logo very simple a uh, very simple design. This would. This is actually. This looks like the design of a smartphone. On a computer, would it would look a bit different, but uh, this looks like a smartphone format. And uh, you change it so you can have this on uh, on a hotel. If you have it in your bar, 
it's nice to have like um, a welcome page so to speak so it's very easy to use very simple no big no big uh, hassle here um, you have the quick setup here to change the modes where how you want to use it you can use it as a repeater a client or multi SSID remember for multi SSID you need to use VLANs if you don't know what a VLAN is uh, google it VLAN is a virtual a virtual LAN it's a so what you do you have on the same uh, Ethernet so to speak on the same Ethernet port from the switch the switch has to be VLAN capable you can have several uh, networks uh, as I said before you can have your office network you can have the you know, network for your clients so you don't mix up uh, networks it's not a good policy to give access uh, to your clients to your uh, work network to your corporate network it's not a good policy uh, especially in hotels if you are using this in a hotel you're not going to put uh, your clients on the same network where you have your your accounting your reception uh, um, applications uh, where you have your servers and things like that so it's, it doesn't make sense share that network with your clients so you create a separate network with this uh, with this option and of course you will need a switch with VLAN capability and that's about it very simple uh, I'm gonna check if there's a firmware uh, update um, I'm gonna upgrade it and I'm gonna set it up and uh, if you've been all this time until the end uh, consider subscribing and uh, give it a thumbs up if you have some questions uh, leave it below uh, on the comments and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can and uh, see you next time